one of the great uses for Vertice Flow is as a liner under direct place composites and that's what we're going to do uh, in these restorations you're going to see us doing a couple restorations here and uh, on this first one it's going to be a class 2 direct composite and I'm going to use the Vertice Flow as a liner underneath it it's really become common practice today to use a flowable composite under a direct place composite restoration and that's what we're going to do here with the Vertice Flow uh, except the benefits are that uh, since it's a self etching flowable composite there's no separate etching step that's needed or no separate uh, bonding agent step that's needed. Uh, the Vertice Flow bonds to dentin and cut enamel and so we don't have to go through any of those extra steps. In fact once we finish the preparation we're going to rinse it off as you see us doing here and then we're going to go ahead and dry it for five seconds and you're going to hit it with an air blast directly for five seconds and dry the dentin. Vertice Flow bonds well to wet dentin to moist dentin but the highest bond strains that we see are to dry dentin and so it's really nice to be able to tell a dentist look just dry it for five seconds like we used to do with enamel while you're bonding it takes out all the ambiguity of what is uh, moist dentin really look like and just dry the dentin then put it into place so we fill about a third of the preparation with the vertice flow as you see here and then we use the enclosed brush to thin the material and to uh, take it and move it up the cavity wall preparation towards the enamel margin. So we're going in and spreading this all around so it's it's thinning the material as we do this but at the same time we're coating the entire inside of the preparation with the vertice flow and this is important we really want to cover all the two structure whether it's dentin or cut enamel with the vertice flow get it down to a layer that's about half a millimeter thick and then we're going to go ahead and light cure this for 20 seconds. This happens to be a shade uh, A2 and so a 20 second cure is more than enough to cure the vertice flow. And you can see we've got our first layer of the liner in place. Because of the size of the hole from the decay that was in there I'm going to go ahead and place a second layer on top of that first layer and you'll notice that we don't need to go in and agitate it with the brush because we've already got vertice flow covering uh, all of the two structure on the inside of the cavity preparation so we just place a little more vertice flow and then cure it again for 20 seconds at this point we've got our vertice flow covering the entire two structure it's been bonded into place and now we just treat it like a typical uh, direct composite and we can place uh, our composite on top of it this is Herculite Ultra we're using a plastic instrument to uh, put this into place and shape it and um, you know one of the frustrating things for me with uh, direct composites over the years has been post-operative sensitivity and I always got the feeling it was from the, the step after we etch it and rinse it before the bonding agent where we had to leave the dentin moist I would get questions from dentists all the time saying what does moist mean should I use a cotton pellet to dry it or just a little bit of air or just put a high volume suction next to it how do I get it the right degree of moist and I had to be honest and say I have no idea I don't know what moist means to you it might be different than what it means to me so uh, vertice flow and the ability to dry the dent and I don't think can be overstated just how important that physical quality is the composite's been cured we use a 7408 burr to do any shaping that we need to do and clean up the margin and we're using the high luster points to go in and polish that and get it up to a high shine for the interproximal box we're going to use the opti disc uh, to go in and finish that and the composite's finished we're moving to the tooth behind it we've got a small class one occlusal restoration that we're doing and a little two surface ol restoration uh, that's behind that and if you pay attention to the steps that are involved when doing vertice flow some of the more uh, technique sensitive steps especially the application of the bonding agent is removed with the vertice flow and takes a lot of the guesswork out of direct composites which I love look at that that's five seconds of air just being blown right onto those two preparations I mean that is counterintuitive if you've been doing composites for a while because we've been taught that dry dentin is not a good bond and that's really one of the big steps forward with vertice flow is the ability to have a nice high bond strength to dry dentin so we place our first increment in then we use the enclosed uh, brush to again take that material 
And we're not just thinning the material here. You really want to agitate it into the tooth structure, into the preparation for 15 to 20 seconds. You want to be sure you use this paintbrush too, the one that comes with the Vertice Flow and not a tumbleweed brush or a micro brush or anything like that. That incorporates too much air into it. The paintbrushes that are enclosed work perfectly for smearing the Vertice Flow around the inside of the cavity preparation. Again, curing this for 20 seconds because it's a shade A2. And as I look at these preparations now with that first uh, layer of liner built into it, I realize that they're shallow enough where I can just actually use the Vertice Flow as the entire restoration. Uh, I would have reached perhaps for another flowable composite before. You know, on larger composites, I, I like to use uh, something that's a little stronger, like the uh, Herculite Ultra that we used on the tooth in front of it. But for these smaller restorations, most dentists that I talk to do use a flowable composite. Now you can use the same composite that you use for a liner as your final restoration. So again, we place some more of the Vertice Flow into the preparation. No need to agitate it. Cure it for 20 seconds, and then we'll go in and do any finishing or polishing that needs to be done. Again, these are the high luster composite points uh, being used on these small restorations. Um, one of the nice things about using the enclosed brush is that you can kind of shape that uh, Vertice Flow with the brush uh, so that when you cure it, you shouldn't have too much finishing to do afterwards. And uh, as you look at these restorations, the afters on the right, you can see just how well that A2 Vertice Flow disappears into the tooth. And look at all the steps we eliminated going from the before to the after.